Hi, I'm Dr. Jill Jim. I am currently the Executive Director for Navajo Department of Health. I first want to thank uh, Ms. Niagara and Brockbridge, Ms. Navajo Nation, to have me share um, the one word on what I think it means to be a um, women leader. I first want to also thank her and many other women leaders on their leadership, and I think the one word would be humility. I believe that a Navajo woman or a woman leader has to have humility, and I think we do. Um, we are able to um, listen. We're able to um, have an understanding of our perspectives and um, the situations that we're in and the roles that we have. I know my grandmother and many other grandmothers and Nullies probably talked about the role that we have as Navajo women leaders and um, we're a leader in our household, we're a leader in maybe our job, we might be a leader in our marriages, our relationships, so um, that requires um, being compassionate, being able to put others first, and also just having an open mind. So. I think those are important characteristics of being a women leader and showing humility. So I just want to commend all Navajo women leaders again. And uh, my mother is Louise Yellowman, and she's originally from Tessa Anado Jones Ranch area. I see Adenala. My mother and my father is from the late. My father's the late Frank Yellowman from Tessa Bans Habitino Cedar Ridge Broadway Gap area. I grew up in the Tuba City area. I am the Division of Community Development Executive Director. I was appointed in 2019 by President Jonathan Nez. So I want to extend my appreciation and gratitude for serving the Navajo Nation in this capacity. And when I think back to leadership, and Navajo Nation women leadership. I think about the shoulders I stand on. <clears throat> I think about my grandmother, Ba Houston, and my mother, Louise Yellowman, who instilled service in me. And my grandmother, Ba Houston, used to feed people, and that was her way of service and contributing to the community. And of course, that was passed on to my mother, Louise, and my mother served uh, in several leadership capacities throughout her lifetime. <clears throat> and through her leadership, I saw perseverance. I saw elements of resiliency. I also saw kindness. And that's something that has um, helped me uh, uh, in my role of leadership uh, in serving the Navajo people. One of the most important things that my mother always shared with me, and this was passed on from her mother, uh, Ba Houston, was in order to serve the Navajo people, you have to love the Navajo people. And that goes hand in hand with loving the land we live on. So in order to serve the Navajo people, we have to love the land we live on. <clears throat> the vision of community development is a large division. And we serve the Navajo people by way of the 110 chapters. We also serve the Navajo people through building commercial and residential capital outlay. 
We also serve the Navajo people through addressing the Navajo Nation, rural addressing, and community housing. Those are major infrastructures that help build and improve the quality of life to the Navajo people. And I'm really honored to be a part of uh, this time. I'm honored to have served um, the Navajo people through this capacity. And yeah. Yaat e hello, she e ya a seki ba la fran sashi yin shi. Tropa han de shlon na kita basuchin, sanjikin and dashiche do na kita dashinele. Beish bit kode e na sha akat as on the shlon. Before I get started, first and foremost, I shah had this Navajo Shuteja for uh, allowing me and, and selecting me to be amongst amazing Dana women for this year's National Women History Month. I shah had this class. To answer your question, what is the one word that best describes women's leadership or leadership in general would be balance. As the founder CEO of Ashi Beauty, the first Native American prestige beauty brand in the country, the first Native American beauty brand to open not one but two physical locations on and off the Great Dene Nation. Balance is the true key to my success for breaking many barriers in the beauty industry that ignored us for so many years. Balance, you know, we're taught at such a young age, and we as women, as the nests, uh, we are balancing our family, our home, our jobs, our livestock, and our careers, and our education, and so on and so forth. Balance is our key role to keep everything steady. So balance, A, I would be my word. That best describes, you know, strong leadership. And, you know, as we are building these businesses, as we are truly inspiring others to do uh, the unthinkable, you know, um, the, the thing that, was, that I always come back to mind is always being able to hold on to our Dene way of life, our teachings to be passed on, and to protecting our sacred, and at the same time, balancing all that into this modern world that we all live in. So, yes. To everyone watching, not a shik ero shinre esh a Naomi glasses in shia, hush gone her dot initially, a shi a bashashin, a shi and dasha che, tohigli ni dashinella. To answer the question, describing in one word what it has taken to be on my current journey is courage. Many of us are walking this journey, some with years of experience and some who are taking that first step. However, I believe we can all agree that it takes a lot of courage to be where we're all going. We step out in courage when we decide to do something new, whether it's in deciding to take up a traditional art form like weaving and starting a new business or becoming a public figure such as Miss Navajo. It takes so much courage to roll up your sleeves, face any fears that you may have head on, and to dive into what you decide to do with courage and faith. My mom encourages me and she says there are two scenarios that can happen when you try something new. Best case scenario, you're told yes and everything works out. The other is you're told no. And yes, that's scary and hurts, however, in the event that happens, you then have to get back up and try again with a new plan. There is courage in trying again after a first plan didn't work out and to push past that fear. Every new venture you head into takes courage, whether it's a new business venture, being the face of a movement, overcoming obstacles, or entering rooms no one like you has before. It takes being one courageous Dene Edzar to get it done. May we all continue to uphold the spirit of courage so that the future generations can walk into a future that is brighter than ever for all of us. Ehyeh and have a great day. 
Hi everyone, happy National Women's History Day. I'm so honored to be part of this wonderful group of women that Miss Navajo has brought together for this special day. Sha'alana Yazi Yanishia, Tutsoni Nishlin, Tatnasani Bajishin, Tabaha Dashache, Kiaani Dashinale. Hello everyone, my name is Alana Yazi and I'm the creator and founder of the fancy Navajo.com, which is a lifestyle and food blog that follows along my life as a contemporary Dinak woman living here in this city. However, what I'm most known for are my blue corn recipes, such as fancy blue corn cupcakes and fancy blue corn cookies. One word that describes being a woman in leadership to me is inspiration. Through the Fancy Navajo, I hope to inspire others to see the fancy, bright, colorful ways of life of being a Diné. And my goal is to always inspire others to embrace your culture no matter where you live. Whether that's through fashion, through gardening, through cooking, inspiration opens the door to creativity and innovation, and it empowers others to be who they are. Through the Fancy Napo, it's been amazing to see people's recreations of my recipes, my fashion tips, and just everything at Fancy Navajo. Thank you, Miss Navajo, for having me. You can follow me on my social media channels at the Fancy Navajo on Instagram and at the Fancy Navajo blog on Facebook. I hope you guys all have a wonderful day. Bye. Yad e she e dian vi met you again ishke. A domina and a stenigi ek asche in the shle, na hitler bashes chin, tabaha dashiche, I don't na hitler dashinelle. Hello everyone, my name is Diane V. Mitchell. I'm of the Red Bottom people, born for African American. My maternal grandfather is of the Water's Edge people, and my paternal grandfather is African American. I am originally from Chinle. I am a wildcat, and I currently reside in Phoenix, Arizona. I am an educator of over 13 beautiful years. I am also an artist, and the name of my business is Aligi Kisses. My art is all about celebrating the beauty of both of my Diné and Black cultures. Through my business, I also bring people together in interactive paint sessions online and in person, and I encourage everyone to live colorfully each day. I believe that art and storytelling are the ways in which my ancestors have always connected and healed and expressed themselves. And so that is how I honor my cultures. When it comes to being a woman in leadership, there are so many words that come to mind. But the word that stands out above all, maybe my top five, would definitely be the word authentic. As a leader, it is important for me to be true to who I am, to represent myself in the most authentic, unapologetically way possible. And I've learned that whether I'm working with adults or children, it doesn't matter. It is important for me to be authentic. It is important for me to represent my way in a beautiful and sacred way. And I've learned that in order for me to build community, to build eh within my community, I have to maintain that, to build that trust. And I think that that is one of my superpowers, to be authentic. Yat e she ya Niagara Rock Bridge check ya ani na shnesh ka hanzo ba shesh chi na ke dina ada shesh chi ko ka na da shnale do she e dina ba chi ke nishle. To me, being a woman in leadership means to uphold the characteristics of integrity. Being a woman in leadership, you must learn how to love your people, how to have empathy, and also have to have integrity. Having integrity meaning to be honest and to also have knowledge to give to the people of whom you serve. Being a woman in leadership, you must also remember to always stay grounded to your morals, what you were taught when you were being brought up by your parents, by your grandparents, the people who supported you. It's always important to reflect back on those morals to help you go throughout your time as a leader to helping, whether it be your people, your community, your families, whatever it is that you may be leading, it's important to always remember to have that 
integrity, to have empathy, to have love, to be humble, and to always be kind to all those that we meet and that we are serving. That's what it means to be a woman.